It is a pretty uh, strong headwind. I'm getting 5.5 miles a gallon. Got 43 miles uh, left in the tank, and it's 43 miles to the gas station. pulled over at this off ramp because it said gas and it's one of those old ass pumps that hasn't been on for years so wish me luck <laughs> do they have gas yes one mile to empty gas station hey guys thanks for tuning in i just wanted to share that running out of gas clip with you because i felt like that was a continuous problem on this 6500 mile trip to the west coast where gas stations are pretty far apart from each other and you're dealing with a gas guzzling rig but guys this is going to be the last episode of the roads less traveled if you haven't checked out one through seven be sure to check those out there's some scenery and education in all of those videos but this one i'm going to summarize everything you need to know before you hit the road to start boondocking so firstly, I'm gonna summarize my RV experience. This is my first RV. I purchased it in August, 2020. I spent a couple months upgrading and updating a couple things because I knew I was gonna be off grid and boondocking. And then my first trip was December, 2020. Since that time, I've done 22,000 miles, visited 26 states, and been to some amazing places. Now, none of that would have been possible if YouTube didn't exist because I learned a lot of stuff from all different channels that helped me get to where I went to. So that's why I'm summarizing my experience for you because I did go through, I think 30 or 40 or 50 different channels to learn what I learned, but ultimately everything I needed, I'm gonna share with you because maybe you're looking to do some of the off-road boondocking that I do. Before you jump into boondocking, you're gonna wanna figure out what type of boondocking you're gonna do. Are you gonna do easy to get to boondocking sites like parking lots and maybe a little bit off the road? Or are you looking for that extreme epic location on the side of a cliff where it takes a little bit more effort and planning to get to? Once you figure that out, you can fine tune what your needs are gonna be. Boondocking requires you carry a lot more stuff, if you will. It's something to consider, and this is in most cases, not all cases, but you have a payload, cargo load capacity on your RV. And most of the time that does not include water. Now water weighs about eight pounds per gallon and you're going to want to bring a lot of water and supplies when you go boondocking. So I would recommend you find a camper that has a big payload. My camper here has a 2,500 pound payload. So that definitely helps me load more things up for those boondocking locations. Other things to consider when boondocking. Firstly, water, you're gonna need a lot of it. You're gonna bring your food and your supplies. You're gonna need some way to get power. Either you have a solar panel system with batteries or you have a generator or a combination of both. All of that weighs something. Then because you are boondocking, you're gonna wanna bring some tools in case something happens. So again, that weighs something. And then whatever other comfort items you want, all of that weighs something. And keep in mind, since you're boondocking or away from typical RV park, you don't have that corner store where you can go get some toilet paper or shampoo. So you're gonna have to load everything you need in your camper because you don't wanna get to your boondocking site and then leave to go get resources that's pointless I would rather have everything with me and then enjoy the place I found so keep in mind you're gonna need a lot of payload or you're gonna slim down your supply next up let's talk about your tow vehicle now that you have your travel trailer already and it is loaded with supplies be sure you have a tow vehicle that can handle all those supplies so my tow vehicle is a 2020 Ford Expedition and the towing capacity is 9,500 pounds. This camper weighs 4,500 pounds. Then the tongue weight capacity on the Expedition is 950 pounds with a tongue weight on the Micro Mini is 450. So as you can see, I have a lot of room for cargo on both my RV and in my tow vehicle. Now, depending on what type 
of boondocking you're looking to do. If you're just looking for something off the side of the road, then you don't need 4x4. If you are looking to get to some of those more extreme places, I would highly recommend 4x4. The last thing you want to do is buy a two-wheel drive vehicle and then you want to try reach those crazy places, but that two-wheel drive limits you. 4x4 is just another extra layer of security or safety when you're going boondocking off-road. Another thing to consider when you're talking about your tow vehicle is the comfort of everyone inside of the tow vehicle. Now initially my first thought was to get a pickup truck but then I realized I have two young kids and a dog that may need to be tended to more often than not when traveling down the road. So my wife actually sits in the back with the kids. We have a three row SUV. That's something really to consider. I do think it's an exceptional tow vehicle and I would highly recommend it over a pickup truck. So make sure you think about that when you're choosing your tow vehicle. Every season has its own challenges, but they also have their own advantages. Now, if you're looking to summer boondock like most people, one thing you're gonna run into as an issue is air conditioning. Now, you can use your air conditioning with a generator, but do you want to carry a generator and listen to that loud noise all the time? And you can run AC with a solar panel, but it really it's only for like 30 minutes and then you've depleted all of your battery. So that's one challenge in the summer. As for winter camping, one thing you will use extreme amounts of is propane to keep the RV nice and toasty inside. So as you can see, depending on what season you are camping, just prepare for the extreme heat or the extreme cold. Obviously the easiest times to camp are spring and fall, but then you're dealing with bad weather or rain more often than not. Now, as mentioned in this whole series, I do not plan my trip based on where I'm gonna boondock. I plan based on things I want to see, and while I'm going to that location, I will find boondocking spots along the way. And here are a couple apps that help me find the best boondocking locations. Firstly, we have The Dirt, then we have Campendium, then we have All Stays, and then freecampsites.net. Now using all of those apps combined gives you the best chance in finding a great boondocking location. One thing you also need to keep in mind is if you have a traditional RV dump like I do and tanks and not a composting toilet, which I don't wanna deal with, you're gonna to want to find a way to find dump stations. Now, most of those apps I mentioned have a filter where you can include finding dump stations and water, but I use another app as well, which is RV Dump. So make sure you download all of those apps to make your boondocking experience more enjoyable. Now, coming back to talking about power. So out of the 22,000 miles I traveled, the first 10,000 miles I carried a 2,000 watt generator. Now these generators run between $1,000 to $2,000. And I chose to go small, firstly because payload, but secondly because it's much better to deal with a small generator. But after those 10,000 miles, I realized it was better just to increase my solar than carry a whole nother generator around. So I initially started all my travels with 570 watts of solar but I then increased it to 760 watts of solar. That extra panel gave me the confidence to travel without the generator, which I highly recommend. Now, if you're worried you may run into a couple days or a week of no sun to charge your batteries, Keep in mind, those generators are expensive. And if you do have to go to a campground with hookups, it's still cheaper to do that than actually buy a generator. And to me, that far outweighs the inconvenience of owning a generator, being that it's an added cost and you have another thing to maintain and secure and it's more payload. So that's what I would recommend. Now I did make a video in my series about security while boondocking and I go through all the tips and tricks in detail in that video, so check that out. But overall, out of all the nights I went boondocking over the last year, I've never had anything strange or weird happen. Now, I do think everyone should have a plan in place in case something happens, just because nobody knows what happens in the unknown. So make sure you have a plan. You don't have to think it's very dangerous out there and don't think it's super safe out there. Just make sure you have some plan. Check out that video and form your own plan about safety while boondocking. Now, one thing that's made my boondocking experience more enjoyable is bringing less crap, if you will. When I get to my campsite for the night, it honestly takes me five minutes to set up. Now, all I really do is I put down my stabilizers and I put down my tongue jack and I leave my car connected. Why do I leave my car connected? Well, firstly, 
I don't plan on going anywhere once I've reached my boondocking location. I plan on joining the boondocking location. There are some times where I do unhook and then I go adventure in the car, but most of the time I stay connected. But the other main reason to have your setup fine-tuned is because in case you do need to leave quick, bad weather's coming in or you don't feel comfortable, you can also leave in five minutes. So it does take me five minutes to set up and five minutes to break down. If I do find myself having a bonfire at night, I'll take all my furniture out, set up the bonfire. But before I go to bed, I put it all away. I never leave everything out when I'm boondocking just because I don't know who's around there, I don't know what weather's coming, and I don't wanna deal with that in the event that I need to leave quickly. Now guys, that's gonna summarize a couple main points that I wanna bring up before you figure out how you wanna go boondocking. But guys, remember overall, you just wanna get out there and start exploring. Sometimes it's a bit overwhelming to think you're gonna go sleep somewhere without hookups, but at the end of the day, it's not. Just go there, if your batteries die, figure out how to get more batteries. If your solar's not charging, figure it out on the way. I do recommend you plan little short trips before a long big trip. And I actually did a couple of those. I did a couple, two or three, four day trips before I decided to hit the road for three, four weeks at a time. But guys, the most important thing is just have fun. Go explore this beautiful country. There's so much to see in this country. You can experience everything. Deserts, mountains, snow, heat, Everything that you want to see is in this country. So I encourage you to hook up the trailer and hit the road and see America. But guys, as always, if you have any questions, concerns, or comments, leave them down below. But until next time,